Ladies and gentlemen, great to see you today and welcome to this, our very, very festive travel show today. Yes, ho, ho, ho. Did you know that it's only nine months until Christmas? Yet yeah, nine months, that's all. So ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't started thinking about your Christmas plans this year yet, well, you're in the ideal place today because we're going to be giving you lots of ideas to spend a very spectacular and very memorable Christmas 2023. Yes, on today's show, show we're going to be showcasing six of our brand new festive tours. Now these tours are based on some of the most popular tours from Wendy Wu Tours with lots of festive magical ingredients thrown into them to make this a Christmas that you will truly remember for the rest of your lives. Yes, very, very exciting. And talking of that, one of those tours, we're going to China. Yes, and as you will have seen on the news, China, it's open, it's ready, and China can't wait to welcome you back again. So we are super excited to show you our China Christmas tour and to get you back to China this year. So lots coming up. We're going to be diving more into each of those festive tours later in the show. I am so excited for this one. So ladies and gentlemen, I know many of you will have seen me before. Yes, I'm your friend Andy from Wendy Wu Tours. And if you haven't seen me before, I'm Andy, head of PR at Wendy Wu Tours. And for those of you who are new to watching our travel shows, yes, Wendy Wu Tours are the UK's multi-award winning specialist tour operator where everything is taken care of for you. So you don't have to do anything but simply go away on holiday and sit back and enjoy and make lots of new friends in the process. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do stay tuned until the end of today's show because that's when we're going to be opening up our VIP travel lounge. Yes, that's your opportunity to speak to the experts at Wendy Wu Tours who are just waiting to answer all of your questions on any of the Christmas tours featured in today's show, plus escorted touring at large. So really good opportunity for you to ask your questions and also to mingle. It is a travel lounge, so you'll be able to mingle with other guests as well. Can't wait for that one. So ladies and gentlemen, yes, it's that time we're going to dive into those festive Christmas tours and I'm here with Keith. Keith is one of the travel experts at Wendy Wood Tours. Keith, good to see you today. Nice to see you, Andy. And yes, we're talking China. As you heard, China is open. Yes, back open, ready. Very exciting news. So Keith, I want to know, what is China like at Christmas? Well, China's where it all started for Wendy Wu. It's, it's a sensational country to visit. And don't forget, Wendy Wu is the number one tour specialist for fully inclusive for China. It's got, it's got both sides. It's got the ancient treasures and things like the, the Great Wall and the glitz and glamour and the man-made sites such as the, the cities of Shanghai and Beijing. And it's so, something for everyone to see. But not only that, at Christmas, it's, uh, it's got a great climate actually. In December, it doesn't really get above four degrees. And it's actually the driest part of the year in, in China. So you're going to enjoy the wonders of China in a nice fresh environment and temperature. And it's not going to rain on you. So there's really little chance of rain. But what there is a good chance of is some snow, which will be amazing. And just to see China, you know, uh, the Great Wall covered in snow or the, the surrounding areas covered in snow might make for a magical Christmas if the, if the snow comes down. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, that sounds fantastic. Love the idea of snow at Christmas in China. So Keith, tell us more about this festive China tour. Well, the festive China tour is actually the In Pursuit of Pandas tour. It's an 11 day tour to China. It leaves the UK on the 23rd of December. So not only do you get Christmas day, 
in China, you get New Year's in China as well. So it's a really wonderful tour. And don't forget, it's all fully inclusive with Wendy Wu, which, and what I mean by that is all your flights are included, all your accommodations included, which is all four star accommodation. There's all your tours are included, all your tour guides are included, all your transfers are included. And don't forget, you've also got your out, our outstanding guides to be with you for the whole trip, so you will have a sensational time. And this tour actually starts in Beijing. You get three days in Beijing. Then we wish you down south to Zhang, and you have two days in Zhang. Then we take you off to Chengdu for the last part of the tour, and you've got four days in Chengdu before you, you go back home. Keith, it sounds fantastic. I've got to say, love the idea of this. So tell, tell us more about what are the highlights of this particular tour. Well, yeah, it's an amazing tour. Um, so you start in Beijing, as we said, and you, you've actually got three days in Beijing, and we take, and it's actually, Beijing has actually got some of the most historical and most importantly, political sites in the whole of China. Um, you've got Tiananmen Square where we take you, which is the world's largest public square. So a great place to be. And it's actually the final resting place of Chairman Mao as well. And then we'll take you into the Forbidden City, which was frequented by the emperors 500 years ago. And, and it's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So you can imagine it's, it's amazing inside. There's over 900 palatial buildings inside. So there's plenty to see. But not only that, we take you to the Temple of Heaven, which is a, a, a fine example of Ming architecture within Beijing. And when you go to the Temple of Heaven, we'll actually walk you through the park. And it's really, really interesting because as you walk through the park, you, you'll get a glimpse of ordinary Chinese life. You'll, you'll see the guys there around you doing Tai Chi and they're playing chess in the park. So there's loads going on. And I think they even do folk singing and stuff like that in the park. So it's, it's a really wonderful time to be there and to go and see things in, in Beijing. And then from Beijing, we take you to Zhang. Zhang is actually the, the start of the fabled Silk Road. So, you know, it's hot topic at the moment, Silk Road, you know, everybody's talking about it. And we take it, we take it to Zhang, we, we do a tour on the, on the wall that encircles the 14th century city of Zhang. Once again, incredible place to go. That's not really why people go to Zhang Lo. Zhang is actually home of probably the most important archeological find in the 20th century. It's where they found the terracotta warriors. And you can marvel at these terracotta warriors which were carved over 2,000 years ago. I think there's about 7,000 of them and they're, they're kind of life-size and you can walk amongst the warriors and the chariots and the life-size horses. Incredible place to go. Afterwards, you get a feast of the, I think it's the Xuzhou dumplings, which apologies if my pronunciation's incorrect, but the Xuzhou dumplings and you have those and you actually get uh, treated to a Tang Dynasty dancing show in the evening. So there's loads to see and loads to do there. From Zhan, we take you to Chengdu. We don't just take you to Chengdu, we take you on a bullet train to Chengdu. So it's not just getting there, it's a great experience just getting there as well on the bullet train. And in Chengdu, you get to see the Grand Buddha of Lishan, which is the largest um, carved statue of a Buddha in the whole wide world. So once again, there's loads to do in Chengdu as well. Ladies and gentlemen, gosh, did you hear that? So many highlights. It sounds absolutely incredible. I know I keep saying that, Keith, but I think it just sounds fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. But tell us, what are we going to be doing on Christmas Day? What are the, the Christmas bits that are thrown into this extravaganza? Well, as I said at the start, actually, it's not just Christmas Day, it's New Year's Day as well you've got on this tour. It's, it's an amazing tour. Christmas Day, you're in Beijing, and as we said, there's a really good chance of snow. So, you know, in England, we don't have the chance of a white Christmas that often, but there's a really good chance you might get it. We can't absolutely promise it, but there's a good chance you'll get a white Christmas or a smattering of snow around, so it'll be lovely. You're in Beijing, you're on the Great Wall of China, and actually our guides will take you to a lesser traveled part of the Great Wall, where you can have a photo opportunity. And you'll probably be just on your own on the Great Wall. What an amazing place to be on, on Christmas day, and hopefully with some, some, some of the white stuff around mm. as well, just to make it extra special Christmassy. And not only that in Beijing, we'll give you, we will swap out your traditional turkey lunch, your turkey dinner for the traditional Chinese Peking duck dinner, uh, which is, is something in itself, a, a, a wonderful feast in the evening, and I'm sure will make Christmas day wonderful. For New Year's, however, we've got something exceptionally special. Um, 
we take you to Chengdu. And I didn't say about it earlier because Chengdu is actually very famous for one particular fact. It's home of the Chengdu Conservation Centre, which is home to the pandas. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing place. It's actually a conservation centre. It's built around the, the, the pandas' natural habitat in North Sichuan. So it's all kind of rocky and mountainous and everything like that. It's a big area and there's 80 pandas that reside there. And you just get to see the pandas and you get to see them do what pandas do. I mean, you'll see them munching on their bamboo and stuff like that. But they're, they're actually quite playful characters and you get to see them doing roly polies and everything. <laughs> they're really lovely and what a wonderful way to spend Christmas Day. Um, uh, sorry, New Year's, not Christmas actually, that's New Year's Day. Um, we watching the pandas and not only that afterwards you'll get um, treated to the local Sichuan hot pot dishes which are traditional and you'll have that on New Year's with all your newfound friends on the tour that you can share all your experiences with and talk about what a wonderful time you've had I mean and I think if I'm being honest about this tour when you get home and you say to your friends do you know what I spent Christmas Day on the Great Wall of China and I spent New Year's Day watching the pandas in Chengdu, I think that's a once in a lifetime. And you know, hopefully with a bit of snow as well, a proper magical Christmas experience that you're never gonna have again. Amazing, Keith, I tell you, it sounds spectacular. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm booking, hope you are too. So ladies and gentlemen, yes, we are continuing on this festive travel around the globe here today on this unique and extraordinary festive travel show at Wendy Wooters. And now another great one for you. We are off to Sri Lanka. Yes, Christmas in Sri Lanka. And I'm joined by Gary. Gary is our Sri Lanka travel expert. Thank good you, to see you. Good Thank to see you. you. That's a lovely title to have. Thank you. Fantastic. Really <laughs> good you could join us today. So, ladies and gentlemen, I know, like myself, you're just itching to know why Christmas in Sri Lanka, Gary. Um, a couple of reasons. I mean, there's probably many, many reasons. But to kind of make this brief, I would say that um, firstly, the weather. You know, it's the most perfect time to go. I actually, the last time I went to Sri Lanka was early January time, so I've experienced the, um, the country around this time, um, and it is beautiful, hot sunshine. So you wave goodbye to British winter, uh, and it's, way, you know, say hello to the, the sunshine, the 26, 27 degrees every day, not a cloud in the sky, hardly any rainfall. Um, you know, I saw no rain, I think, whilst we were there last time. Um, and the nice thing about it is it's not too hot or humid. So I think that's probably the biggest pull to escape the British winter. But secondly, I think, um, um, and what was kind of quite a surprise to me, I think, is that um, in Sri Lanka they celebrate Christmas. So the whole month of December is a great time to, to um, experience it. From the 1st of December, it's quite customary in Sri Lanka for them to set fireworks off. Uh, and literally this kind of celebration continues for the whole month. So it's lots of friends meeting up with one another. They hang up decorations, you know, around their houses. Uh, they even make Christmas cake and mince pies. So, you know, whilst it's Christmas far from home, it's Christmas home from home, just on the basis that I think fantastic weather and the fact that it's celebrated as the festive season. So ladies and gentlemen, you can clearly see just why Sri Lanka is the hot place for Christmas this year, Christmas 2023. Gary, love it. Tell us more about this tour. Um, okay, I will do. Um, Christmas in Sri Lanka is a 16 day tour. And I think one of the um, big points about this is the fact that the tour, this departs on the 17th of December. So as part of this tour, you'll get to incorporate all of Christmas plus also New Year's Eve as part of your itinerary. So I think that's a big, big plus point for uh, Christmas in Sri Lanka. As with all of our tours, uh, this is a fully inclusive tour. So of course your flights, your hotels, all of your meals, all of the entry um, into all of the, the, the fabulous landmarks that are included. But I guess again, one of the kind of big USPs here is around the tour guide, having somebody that's been born and raised in Sri Lanka with you every step of the way, making sure that you miss out on nothing um, and that you get to experience all of the local cultures, um, the general day-to-day -day life, what it's like to, to live in Sri Lanka. Um, you know, this is an experience that you'll never forget. Um, the tour, the actual tour starts and finishes in Colombo. 
um, and literally travels pretty much the whole, tours the whole island um, entirety. Um, and so this is a great tour for those that have maybe not visited or don't know much about Sri Lanka because you get to see so much of it within those 16 days. Um, and just to give you an example there, you'll visit magnificent temples, uh, UNESCO sites, uh, sacred tem uh, caves um, and uh, ruined cities. So you really get to see sort of everything whilst you're there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't it sound fantastic? Christmas in Sri Lanka. Gary, tell us more. We want to know specifically, ladies and gentlemen, those experiences, the sure. highlights yeah, of sure. this Christmas tour. Well, I think one of the first highlights on this tour itinerary um, is a visit to the fascinating Sigiriya Rock Fortress. Uh, this UNESCO World Heritage Site is one of the most recognisable places in all of Sri Lanka. The fortress, which sits atop a 600 foot high black rock, was built over 1,600 years ago. And if you're feeling up to it, you can climb the steps to the fortress at the top to soak up the fantastic views below. Um, you'll also get to visit the local village of Hiriwaduna, where you'll enjoy a catamaran ride on the lake and take a tuk-tuk to a local home where you'll learn to make a traditional Sri Lankan dish. You'll wander the ruins of the ancient city of Polonarua, which was the capital of Sri Lanka from the 11th to the 13th centuries. You'll discover the many stupas, frescoes and statues. Visit the ruins of the royal palace and bathing pool and explore the group of rock temples. Of course, we'll take you to the Dambulla Cave Temple, which is one of Sri Lanka's most popular religious sites. This temple houses the largest number of Buddha statues and you'll venture inside the temple to admire the 2000 year old colorful frescoes that sweep the rock ceiling. You'll spend an afternoon at a spice garden before heading to Kandy to see the many sights here, as well as sitting down for a fantastic cultural dance show. For anyone who loves wildlife, this tour is sure to whet your appetite. You'll visit the Adawali Elephant Transit Home, which cares for injured and orphaned elephants before releasing them back into the wild. You'll also enjoy not one, but two Jeep safaris at the Yala National Park. This national park is one of the best places for wildlife spotting, and you'll get two opportunities to look out for wild elephants, bears, crocodiles, and many species of birds, and of course, the rare and remarkable leopards. We also take you to the Cascoda Turtle Sanctuary, where you'll see newborn hatchlings getting ready to be released back into the ocean. We spend three nights on the coast in the lovely seaside town of Hikadua. From here, you'll get a chance to explore the many sites of nearby Gaal, including the fort and the old Dutch church, and enjoy a few afternoons to relax on the beach and make the most of that gorgeous Sri Lankan weather. So yes, all sounds fantastic, absolutely Gary, lots in there, but this is Christmas, it's a Christmas show, we want to know, what are those Christmas experiences here? Well Andy, this tour is packed with Christmas highlights and experiences. Um, on Christmas Eve, we ride the train from Kandy to the gorgeous hill station of Nuwara Elia in Sri Lanka's tea country. You can sit back and relax, admiring the passing scenery as we journey 2,000 metres above sea level to Sri Lanka's lush countryside. It's just stunning. Then we're swapping your morning cup of tea on Christmas Day for something even better, the ultimate tea experience. You'll visit a tea plantation where you'll get chance to take part in some tea plucking and learn how this iconic beverage is made. Much like wine tasting, you'll get to sample the many different varieties of tea too. And better still, for this experience, you'll be gifted with a handmade sari dress to wear at the tea plantation, which you can then take home as a keepsake and memento from this fabulous experience. After the tea plantation visit, you'll feast on a delicious Christmas meal for lunch. And then we head to the iconic Grand Hotel for a fabulous high tea in the splendour of their beautiful gardens. And for New Year's Eve, after a city tour of Colombo, you enjoy an evening get together with your fellow travellers for one last time for a fantastic New Year's Eve dinner to end the tour and to see you in 2024.
And so now, ladies and gentlemen, yes, we are continuing with our festive travels and we are off to India. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Lee, Lee, Head of Marketing here at Wendy Wu Tours. Lee, great to see you today. And to you, Andy. Hello and hello, everybody. Fantastic. Now, Lee, sounds very exciting. India at Christmas. Come on, tell us why India for, for your Christmas break this year. Well, December is absolutely the best time to be in India. Google the best time to be in India and it'll tell you December is a fabulous time. You're looking at warm, sunny days, blue skies, low humidity, average daytime highs around 15 to 25. So it's absolutely perfect for touring through India. Now, although only 5% of the population are Christians in India, Christmas is actually quite a big deal in India. So you'll still see a lot of festive decorations over there, uh, see Santa, and all around there's a great time to be there in terms of the festivities. But mostly I would say, enjoy the perfect weather. Now, oh, ladies and gentlemen, sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Christmas under the warm sun in India. Sounds amazingly, I love it. Tell us more about this tour. Well, this tour is a special Christmas edition of our most popular tour in India, and it's called Inspiring India. It's a 15-day, fully inclusive tour, departing on the 13th of December. And it takes in all of the highlights of the Golden Triangle, India's famous touring circle, Agra, Delhi, Jaipur, plus some really special highlights, Udaipur, Ranthambore National Park as well. Oh, sounds great, ladies and gentlemen. Lee, tell us more about this tour. Okay, Andy, well, the tour starts in India's bustling capital, Delhi, where you'll find historic monuments and ruins scattered throughout the city, often side by side with modern buildings and high-rise towers. We spend a full day sightseeing in old and new Delhi, We've got a fabulous rickshaw ride through fragrant spice markets. We visit the beautiful Jama Masjid, India's largest mosque and Humayun's tomb, which is a landmark of Mughal architecture. We'll also visit the pink city of Jaipur. We'll visit a turban museum where you'll learn to tie a turban and even be gifted one to take home for yourself as a memento. You'll stop at the Palace of the Winds, a five-story pink hued palace built in 1799. We'll also visit the Amber Fort, the Jantamanta Observatory and the elaborately decorated Maharaja's City Palace before we visit a nearby craft centre where you get to try your own hand at traditional block printing and carpet weaving. For a real change of pace, we visit the village of Pushka, which lies next to one of India's most sacred lakes. And here you'll enjoy a unique opportunity to participate in a private religious ceremony on the ghats of the lake. In the evening, you'll witness an arti ceremony, which is one of the most important Hindu rituals of worship. This is the ceremony of light where lighted wicks are waved before sacred images to infuse the flames with the deity's love, energy and blessings. In Udaipur, you'll browse a collection of some of the rarest classic and vintage cars in a museum owned by the royal family, you'll visit the beautiful city palace and enjoy a cruise on Lake Piccola, admiring the views of the city from the waters. We then journey on to Ranthambore National Park where you enjoy morning and afternoon safaris the chance to spot the local wildlife, including leopards, hyena, sloth bears, and of course, the elusive Bengal tiger. Well, ladies and gentlemen, so much to see and experience in that tour, but Lee, tell us the all important question, what are those Christmas highlights? Well, on this tour, Andy, both Christmas Day and Christmas Eve are gonna be absolutely unforgettable. Christmas Eve, you'll arrive in Agra, the home of the Taj Mahal, where you'll spend the next two nights. The hotels in India really know how to put on a festive event. And on the evening of Christmas Eve, you'll tuck into a lavish Christmas buffet spread, accompanied by live music, dancing, and traditional Christmas goodies. If you haven't overindulged too much on the Christmas spreads, you'll have the option to attend Midnight Mass at St. Mary's Church, along with the many locals who will also attend. It's sure to be a real highlight and very moving. Christmas Day is an absolute showstopper. You wake in the morning and head to India's most iconic and most magnificent site, the Taj Mahal. You'll have two hours here to explore this astounding monument at your own leisure. After a morning exploring the Taj, you'll enjoy a delicious Christmas brunch feast with plenty of entertainment and celebrations. And we'll then take you to a rooftop restaurant where you'll toast Christmas Day 
with champagne while watching the sun set over the Taj Mahal. And it doesn't end there. Finally, to end this magical day, you'll enjoy a live musical show depicting the romantic story of Emperor Shah Jahan and his beloved wife, Mumtaz Mahal, for whom the Taj Mahal was built. A true Bollywood experience and a wonderful way to end your Christmas day. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't that sound absolutely spectacular? Lee, I tell you, I'm booking. <laughs> I'm absolutely booking that for my Christmas and I hope to see you too, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen, yes, the festivities continue. I told you we were in for a great show today and it truly is turning out to be one of our best shows ever. And we're all gearing up for Christmas 2023. And now we are off. We're off around the globe again and we are landing in Vietnam. Yes, Christmas in Vietnam. Now, Christmas Vietnam was new for Wendy Wu Tours last year, the first Christmas tour did exceptionally well and it's back again this year due to popular demand and actually ladies and gentlemen Christmas in Vietnam inspired the whole of the Christmas collection for Wendy Reuters so it really is a good one and I'm joined now by Pete, Peter Crane, Head of Product at Wendy Reuters. Peter good to see you. And you Andy, and you. Brilliant and ladies and gentlemen I'm sure just like me for those of you who haven't been what is Christmas like in Vietnam, Peter? Well, let's start at the beginning. As, as you said just now, this tour last year was, was so successful for us and we had such a positive feedback from our customers that we, we couldn't resist the idea of uh, expanding the project and now launching six different tours across six different destinations for Christmas 2023. Um, if I may, I'll, I'll read a couple of the lovely comments we had from mm. our customers last year um, that really endorsed this trip. Um, the first said, from start to finish, the tour was a great experience. Touring Halong Bay was an amazing way to spend Christmas Day and made it one we will remember forever. And the second person wrote, this was Christmas with a difference. Visiting wonderful Hoi An and the exceptionally beautiful Halong Bay, we had a good group of travellers and a super Wendy Wu guide who made this trip extra special. That's music to our ears. So as you can tell, our customers really did have a fabulous trip on, a time on this trip last year, so we're excited to be running it again. What we, what we were a little bit surprised about last year was that Christmas in Vietnam, despite it not being a Christian country, is really celebrated. The, the Vietnamese people love Christmas. They love celebrating Christmas with lights, decorations, lanterns, lots of festivities, gathering of families, uh, which was a, a little bit unexpected, but it's a real bonus of being there at this time of year. The other factor, just, um, you know, I think it's an obvious point, but a Chris Christmas in the UK can be cold and damp and miserable, as we know. You know Vietnam is the best time to be there. It's dry, it's sunny, um, it's, it's, the warmest time of, it's the warmest time of year, and typically there's either zero rainfall or very little indeed. Ah, oh, sounds wonderful, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't it? Um, Pete, tell us more about this tour. I will. It's, it's, um, it's a lovely little tour. It's only 12 days. It starts on the 15th of December and travels the whole length of Vietnam from south to north. Uh, as all our programmes are, it's fully inclusive. So it includes the flights, the hotels, the transport, all of the meals, all of the experiences, all of the evening activities, and of course the services of your expert Wendy Wu Tours guide. So um, you, you travel from south to north through the country, finishing at the Christmas weekend, uh, probably the highlight of the whole trip, which is Halong Bay. So ladies and gentlemen, all sounds very good indeed, Peter. We want to know, yes, ladies and gentlemen, don't we? The highlights and experiences of this tour. Yes, I'll, I'll run through it from beginning to end. It's a 12 day tour and uh, <clears throat> it starts in Saigon, the exuberant southern city, which is driving Vietnam forward into the modern world. But it's also, um, as anybody who's been there knows, a treasure trove of fascinating heritage. Um, you can visit the Reunification Palace and see the wonderful colonial French-influenced architecture at Notre Dame Cathedral and the really impressive post-colonial central post office building. Outside Saigon, you can get to visit the Cuchit Tunnels uh, and discover the whole story of the Viet Cong, 
Those tunnels were central to some of the Viet Cong's strategic operations during the Vietnam War, and you'll learn about how they were used by the soldiers during that combat as underground um, hospitals, food and weapon caches, and also living quarters for the soldiers, of course. Then we, then we go to the south of Vietnam, the deep south, the Mekong Delta region, which is also called the rice basket of Vietnam. And there we spent a lovely day just cruising and exploring the backwaters of the, of the Delta, winding through the canals in small paddle boats, and just enjoying the nature of that beautiful part of the country. From Saigon, we fly north to Hoi An. Hoi An, for many people, is a real highlight of Vietnam. It's a charming town with lantern-lit streets, lovely ochre-coloured -colored buildings. Um, we do a lovely little walking tour through the ancient streets, visiting the Japanese covered bridge, the Chinese temple, also a, a traditional Vietnamese market. And nearby we visit the Tra Quay village, which is um, a real chance to see rural Vietnam at its best. You'll get to try your hand at some traditional farming techniques and meet the local farmers, which is a lovely experience in itself. Um, from, from Tra Quay we continue to Hue, Hue is, um, is, a, is a lovely place. It's the embodiment of Vietnam's dynamic imperial era. So the history of Vietnam is very much tied up in this town. It's a city dominated by the, the citadel, the imperial citadel, which you'll get to explore along with the forbidden purple city, which lies within the walls of the citadel, and also visit the royal tomb of Emperor Minh Man. This is an incredible, beautiful complex with about 40 monuments inside it, surrounded by gardens and pools. From Hue, we fly up to Hanoi, which is the capital of Vietnam, as you'll know. In Hanoi, it's a, it's a treasure trove of sites, including the One Pillar Pagoda, the Temple of Literature. We do an amazing cyclo ride through the old quarter of Vietnam, um, buzzing with uh, the, the local uh, motor scooters and, and road traffic. We stop at a local cafe and, and sample um, a really unusual Vietnamese specialty, which is called egg coffee. You've got to try it to believe it. Um, we also witness a really spectacular performance uh, in the evening in Hanoi of a, of a show called the Quintessence of Tonkin Show, which is performed entirely on water. Now we want to know, ladies and gentlemen, don't we? It's Christmas, we're going for Christmas. Peter, what are those Christmas experiences? What's the magic? Of Christmas in this tour. This is this is the best bit of this tour. This is the end of the tour and it's the Christmas weekend and it's got the highlights in it. So what more could you ask for? We, we, we go from, from Hanoi, the capital, to Halong Bay, which is regarded by many as not just the most beautiful place in Vietnam, but one of the most beautiful places on the entire planet. So on Christmas Eve, we board our ship uh, and sail into the Halong Bay on a two-night cruise um, two nights is long enough to take you f into the furthest corners of the Halong Bay. We enjoy lunch on board on, 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 on Christmas Eve and cruise out into the waters, enjoy an afternoon kayaking excursion on the, on the waters of the bay, and then back on the ship in the afternoon um, you can relax, um, enjoy a drinks reception on Christmas Eve, and then sit down to a delicious Christmas barbecue dinner. Then Christmas morning begins like no other Christmas you've ever had with an invigorating Tai Chi session on the deck of the boat as the sun rises over Lan Ha Bay. Now Lan Ha is the bay beyond Halong. This is the place where, where you can get to if you've got a two night cruise in the region. A little bit further off the beaten track into the quieter, less visited um, parts of this, of this region. Equally beautiful, but less visited. It really is a hidden gem. So Christmas day itself begins with Tai Chi, and then you have all sorts of activities on the day itself, including visiting uh, the, the limestone caves, seeing floating villages, kayaking into secluded coves, or just relaxing on, on board the boat, um, or visiting a local beach before fi finishing the day with a Christmas drinks reception on board and a Christmas dinner. So ladies and gentlemen, there you go, Christmas in Vietnam. What a tour and what a way to spend the festive period this year in Vietnam. Peter, thank you, so exciting. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, it's been a pleasure. I've been very fortunate that I've had two long tours already with Wendy Wu, four weeks in China and four weeks in South America both on my own 
and they were absolutely fantastic to the extent that I almost don't want to travel with any other company now because I just feel everything is so well organized from the initial booking to getting safely back to England. The guides are superb. The range of activity suits me perfectly. So there's some history, some geography, quite a lot about the culture of the area, uh, the opportunity to try things, whether it's dance, music, cooking. Um, every day brings a new delight, really. And I do feel so well looked after. If there's any sort of problem, like in the run up to this trip, I was worried about COVID and what would happen if I tested positive, what would happen if I had to isolate. And the logistics department answered all my queries immediately and was so reassuring and made me feel confident that people would help me every inch of the way. And that has been the case, actually. It's been marvelous to be so well looked after. I love that the, the meals are included, so I don't need to start wandering around at night on my own, trying to find somewhere for dinner in a strange area. I love it that all the entries are included, so there's not this big debate about should I, shan't I? How much is it going to cost? How much money do I need to take with me? I've hardly spent anything, to be honest, just incidental expenditure. Uh, so I think the, the value for money, which is not my, my main priority, but it is also extremely good. Ladies and gentlemen, the excitement, the magic continues as we travel around the globe on our Christmas adventures. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go to Egypt. Yes, Egypt is one of Wendy Wouter's fastest and hottest selling destinations. So this is going to be a good one. And I'm joined by Chris, Chris, the travel expert, Egypt <laughs> travel expert at Wendy Wouter. It's good to see you. And you too, Andy. Thanks for having me. Brilliant. Now, Chris, we want to know why Egypt at Christmas? Well, why not is the first question you need to ask yourselves. But if there's some reasons for it, I would say Egypt is most is on most people's bucket list. Most people want to go and see the pyramids. They want to go and see the Sphinx. Want to see Cairo and the British uh, and the uh, Egyptian Museum. Um, but it's packed full of heritage sites, uh, UNESCO heritage sites, I may add, um, that are completely protected. So it is fantastic to see. So whether you go at Christmas or any other time of the year, now Egypt, everyone knows about Egypt. You know, I'm sure you've seen all the movies, I'm sure you've seen The Mummy, and I'm sure Absolutely. you've seen other movies mm -hmm. that have got kind of Egypt all over it, um, and it just doesn't do it justice. Um, everyone thinks it's CGI and things like that, but until you actually see it in life with your own eyes, you can't put it into description. So going over in Christmas time is probably one of the perfect times to go as well, because what you're gonna find is you've got past the scorching heats of 50 degrees during the summer, and you're in the perfect time to go touring, which is kind of around 24 degrees. Um, so it's perfect to be out going out sightseeing and not feeling too hot way throughout the day. Also, what you need to remember, back home, you're gonna have gray skies and cloud and about five degrees. So it's great for that bit of winter sun as well. Um, also, coming into the Christmas periods in Cairo, you're gonna see lots of different lights, Christmas lights and things like that, over in the Coptic area. Even though it is um, a Muslim country, uh, they still celebrate the uh, traditions for ourselves as well. So that's probably why it's a great time to go to Egypt at Christmas. Oh, right, ladies and gentlemen, it sounds amazing. Love the idea of spending Christmas in Egypt, Chris. Tell us more about this tour. Okay, so it is an 11 day tour, uh, leaving on the 20th of December. So you're over the whole Christmas period, right away into uh, New Year as well, which is great. Um, it's for anyone that likes ancient history, uh, likes kind of looking at architecture, because of so many archaeological sites that open Egypt. So it is a really, really great place to spend, not just Christmas, but again, like I say, if you're interested in history. Now, um, it is fully inclusive. So going along with all of our Wendy Roo tours, staying with the same thing that we've got, it is um, all your meals are included, so your breakfast, lunches and your dinners, you've got all your transfers, you've got uh, your guiding fees, your guide as well. Um, there is literally nothing else to pay. So, you know, you only need to pay for souvenirs, which everyone brings back from Egypt anyway, like little tri triangle, your pyramids, key rings and things like that, um, but also your drinks. And that's the only thing you really need to pay for extra. But what we actually have as well on one of our tours is the fact that not only do you have your guide booking, your national guide, which you would get on any one of our Wendy Wu tours, for this one we've actually put an Egyptologist with you. Because there's so much history, the guides are fantastic. It doesn't matter what country you're in for us, the guides are brilliant, but 
because there's so much history in Egypt, we've even put an Egypt Egyptologist, I put my teeth in, <laughs> um, that'll follow you around the whole route. So from the second you can arrive in Egypt, right the way to your leave. Um, so you're gonna get the best of both worlds. You've got a national guide looking after you throughout your stay, and also the Egyptologist giving you all the information you could possibly want. Now the great thing about this tour, it includes pretty much everything. So it is a top to toe tour of Egypt. So first we're gonna arrive into Cairo, we're going to make our way over to Alexandra up towards the uh, northwest and then we're going to make our way down to Luxor where you're going to jump on a Nile cruise uh, for four days and then go down toward Aswan. So it really does encompass everything you could want in Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, it sounds amazing, doesn't it? Yes, I know. Chris, tell us more about the experiences and highlights of this festive Egypt tour. Okay, so you're going to arrive into Cairo. So once soon as you arrive into Cairo, we're going to take you to go and see the Great Pyramids of Giza. <laughs> um, and then obviously, whilst we're there, we're going to go and see the Unblinking Sphinx as well. So also explore the many treasures of the Cairo Museum. I mean, it'd be rude not to, whilst we are all the way over in that destination. So after doing Cairo, after looking at the Sphinx and uh, the Pyramids, we're going to make our way over to the ancient Acropolis of Saqqara, and actually venture inside and inside the Step Pyramid of Djoser, which actually was Egypt's first ever pyramid. Now, after that, we're going to visit uh, El Alamein, which is the site of two, uh, well, two battles during World War II, and tour the military museum, which is actually really, really fascinating. And after that, make our way over to the war cemeteries. Now, explore the Roman ruins um, of Alexandra on the northern coast including the Roman theater and also the catacombs, which are actually one of the seven wonders of the Middle Ages. So you're getting to see lots of things uh, whilst here. Now, after we've done our kind of sightseeing, we're gonna go for a little bit more relaxation by heading down uh, for four nights sailing on the Nile, stopping along the way to explore some of the many historic wonders found along its banks. Now, customers generally love this part uh, and they can enjoy some time unwinding on board, admiring the passing scenery, uh, such as Luxor's East Bank, um, where we're going to visit the monumental Karnak Temple with its towering stones columns, the Avenue of Sphinxes, and of course, Luxor Temple. Now on the west bank of Luxor, the Valley of the Kings, which is burial site of all of the new kingdom of pharaohs from the 18th, 19th, the and the 20th dynasties. So explore some of the tombs um, and seeing the richly decorated walls and chambers, and then go inside the tomb of King Tutan Karmun, where his mummy is on display, which I believe most people have probably seen on the TV now. Um, it's in one shape or the other. Um, from there, we're gonna visit the agricultural town of Kom Ombo, with its twin temples dedicated to Horus and Sobek, and then sail to the Temple of Edfu, which is one of the best preserved sites in all of Egypt. So we're also gonna take you to the magnificent temples of Abyssinia. Now, I'm going to pause on that part simply for the fact that a lot of tour operators don't actually take you to this place. Um, but with Wendy Ruth Shores, of course, we go that little bit extra. Now, these temples are dedicated to Ramesses II and his wife. Now, Ramesses II was actually considered to be one of the greatest pharaohs of the New Kingdom. So the tour ends in Aswan, where you'll see the unfinished obelisk and enjoy a relaxing cruise on a traditional felucca boat. Ladies and gentlemen, wow, doesn't it sound amazing? So much to see, so much to do in Egypt this Christmas. But Chris, you promised us this is a festive Christmas tour. So ladies and gentlemen, we want to know what are those magical festive ingredients? I'm glad you asked, Andy, because Egypt Christmas tour is going to be mind blowing. It really is something special. So on Christmas morning, you're gonna be waking up really, really early, okay? But instead of waking up and peeling potatoes and preparing Christmas dinner and opening presents, you're gonna spend the morning watching the sunrise over Luxor from a private Wendy Wu Tours hot air balloon. So you're gonna ascend 1500 feet above the ground as the sun rises enjoying 360 degree views of Luxor's fabulous landscape taken in the vast archaeological sites below on this 30 to 40 minute flight. In the afternoon, we're gonna spend, uh, spend some time exploring the iconic sites of Luxor's East Bank, 
as mentioned before, and these are some of Egypt's most famous and most impressive sites. Now in the evening, I'm sure you're all wondering what you're gonna be eating. So you're gonna be on board the ship and you're gonna enjoy a Christmas drinks reception ahead of a delicious dinner with your fellow travelers. What a perfect way to celebrate Christmas day and one that you'll never forget. So ladies and gentlemen, yes, the festive excitement continues as we travel around the globe on our festive Christmas adventures. And this time we are off to, yep, the big one, it is Japan, yes. Number one destination for Wendy Wu Tours, the UK's number one travel company to Japan. Would you get that, ladies and gentlemen? And I'm joined now by, this is a treasure, I'm joined by Sandra, who is our Japan travel expert at Wendy Winters. Good to see you, Sandra. Lovely to see you as well, Andy. Brilliant. How are you? I'm really good, really good. good. Really excited about this one. Can't wait. So tell us, Sandra, why Japan at Christmas? Oh, Andy, we couldn't have done a Christmas collection without Japan. I mean, Japan is our top selling destination and we are the market leaders out in Japan. So we absolutely couldn't have done Christmas not in Japan. Um, and of course, in Japan, there's so many festive, wonderful illuminations to see out there and so many different traditions as well. So typically in Japan, they don't have turkey on Christmas day. They, um, they don't actually have sushi either. They took it to KFC on Christmas day, can you mm. believe? Um, but a fantastic time of year to go for the festive illuminations um, and a lovely time for the weather as well, because as you know, Japan can be quite humid, but in the winter time, it is about six degrees and you can get some really beautiful sunny blue skies at this time of year and um, so you're in for a real treat uh, with Japan at Christmas time. Oh ladies and gentlemen doesn't that sound just fantastic what a way to spend Christmas in Japan I love it absolutely love it so Sandra tell us more about this fantastic Christmas tour well, it, it is wonderful, Andy, and it will be wonderful for our customers who travel on this. It is an 11-day escorted tour, and it is based around our really popular tour, Jewels of Japan, which is great for first-time travellers to Japan. And with Wendy Wu Tours, it includes everything um, on the tour. So again, all of the meals, all of the experiences, but again, we've got some real special treats on this one with it being um, Christmas time. So with that, you're going to visit um, Mount Fuji, you're going to visit Tokyo, Kyoto, Hiroshima, but you're going to enjoy a whole host of authentic experiences um, around that festive time in the destination. So some real lovely inclusions in this tour. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I know I keep saying it, but it just gets better and better, Sandra, the more we hear about this Christmas tour. Tell us, Sandra, the highlights, the experiences. What are we going to see there? Oh, my pleasure, Andy. So this tour starts in the bustling capital of Tokyo. And from there, prepare to be wowed by Tokyo's fabulous Christmas displays as you'll soak up the sights of this incredible city. You'll head to the top of the 634 meter tall sky tree tower to enjoy the panoramic views of the city. And on a clear day, ladies and gentlemen, you may get your first glimpse here of Mount Fuji. You'll wander through the Imperial Palace East Garden and stop by the famous Shibuya Crossing. And of course, explore the very atmospheric Sensoji Temple, which is one of the oldest temples of Tokyo. We'll journey through the foothills of Mount Fuji to the beautiful Fuji Five Lake area. And this area, ladies and gentlemen, is particularly beautiful and stunning around the lake where formed by the Mount Fuji past volcanic eruptions. And from here, we'll head up to Mount Fuji's fifth station to admire the most breathtaking views below with Mount Fuji snow-capped peak looming overhead. 
Your hotel that evening, ladies and gentlemen, will be a traditional onsen uh, with wonderful facilities. And you can unwind after a day of exploring in its warm, rejuvenating waters. You'll visit the small village of Oshino and see the crystal clear spring water ponds formed by the Fuji melting snow. And this is really a beautiful area and just lovely to wander and take in the ambience. You'll also get, your, get to try your hand at making the traditional soba noodles here and then tuck into your delicious creations for lunch. We will also visit one of my favourite cities, Kyoto. Kyoto was the ancient capital for around a thousand years and you can see the legacy of ancient Japan at every turn here. This city is full of tranquil temples, traditional Japanese Zen gardens, you'll see the geisha wandering, the historic streets wearing their decorated kyomos in the traditional dress and you'll walk through the bright orange Tory gates of the Fuji Amari Shrine, learn the traditional Japanese handicrafts of origami and even take part in a traditional Japanese tea ceremony with a tea master. You will of course spend some time at the Moving Peace Memorial Park and Museum in Hiroshima for time to reflect on the tragic fallout of the 1945 atomic bomb which struck the city. And whilst in Hiroshima, you'll also jump on a ferry to the Holy Island of Miyajima to explore the traditional market towns and see the island's famous floating Tory gate. We'll also take you to what is considered Japan's most magnificent castle, Himeji Castle. This is immaculately preserved. The 14th century castle is both a national and world heritage site and you'll get to see the beautiful architecture from every angle as well as going inside the castle. You'll also enjoy time wandering around its neighbouring gardens. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, so much, so much included in this tour. Can it possibly get any better? Well, I believe, yes, it can, because now, Sandra, we want to know what's special. What is the magic Christmas ingredients in this tour? Well, Andy, I mean, Christmas is a beautiful time of year and Japan is the most beautiful country and we have so many special things lined up for you. On Christmas Eve, you'll actually be in the historic city of Kyoto, exploring the many wonderful sites I mentioned earlier. So after a day of exploring and experiencing some of the old age traditions of the Japanese culture, we'll take you to a fantastic local restaurant where you can start really celebrating over a lovely Christmas Eve dinner. So on Christmas Day, you'll swap the unwrapping of presents for a visit to Kyoto's most iconic site, the stunning Golden Pavilion, as well as one of Japan's most famous Zen gardens. And as I mentioned earlier, December in Japan can be a little bit cold, so there's a good chance you might get to see those wonderful sights with a sprinkling of snow, which will just make the experience all that much more magical. We'll lunch in the colourful city of Osaka in the Dotonbori district, which is also known for its very flamboyant and electric atmosphere before experiencing that monumental speed of Japan's renowned bullet train as we journey to Hiroshima. In the evening on Christmas Day, you're in for a real treat. You'll enjoy plenty of festivities and a delicious feast with your newfound friends on the tour and our wonderful guide whilst you'll enjoy a wonderful dinner cruise on the waters of Hiroshima Bay with a chance to admire the amazing city lights at night. Ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't that sound amazing? Just think about it for a moment. You could have Christmas Day here in the UK or you could spend Christmas Day in Japan. Mm, difficult question. I know where I'm going for Christmas. Sandra, amazing. Thank you so much. Loved it. Thank you, Andy.